everybody hope you're doing great please check out the description box for all the nice links drop a like subscribe press the bell icon if you like the content and check out the top right eye for more nice links today is all about optimizing the engine class we're gonna make sure that we create some specific functionality to create new states because pushing a state directly to the stack like this isn't good there are a few things we have to do uh, in order to register functions to lua as well so let's get started with that it's it's nothing special really let's go to our state dot h and state dot uh, cpp file here and let's see what we have so what happens right now is that the state initializes the or does the file runs the lua state file basically in the constructor and i don't want that what i want is is for it to save this file name and then we're going to run that later when we want to so let's start off by doing that let's create a lua state file name here let's do a std string lua state file very simple in the cpp file we're just going to save it right here this lua state file equals lua state file and take all of this first of all let's create a function for that let's do a void load file this is going to load the script file we can control x the whole functionality there and just put it in here we'll complain a little bit because you need to do dot c string here and anywhere you have any kind of throw all this stuff you don't have to but it's good to do c string just to convert it to a c string now we can allow our game our states to be created like this we'll create a lua new state we'll open the libraries for it but we're never gonna load the file because there's a few things we want to do in between then we want to register engines functions to the state first and then we want to load the file at the last point let's go to our engine cpp and engine.h you'll see we have update render and run First things first, in our engine.cpp file, you'll see that our run doesn't have a while loop. So we don't really have a game loop to work with. Why well, want that first of all? I want a game loop that runs until there is nothing left in the stack. So the state stack, when that's empty, when there isn't even a main menu and that's popped, then we'll just close the game. We're not going to update or render any state. It's very easy. This states.empty and you do a little not here close that in squirrely braces whatever you want to call it i don't like that there we go once this is done you'll have a game loop so this is your main game loop here this is going to just run and run until you don't have any states left next step is to create a function that initializes a state or adds a new state to the stack and it's very simple void new state or you can say push state void push state and i'm just going to add a const char pointer lua state file and we'll be able to load a state or create a new state with a specific file here as we said earlier as we had it earlier let's go to the cpp file again and let's see what we have so we have this push state so we push a new state like that but now we haven't loaded the states this state's top we haven't loaded the file yet so we're going to load file like that and it's going to load any file that we have set up here but in between this we're gonna have to do a few things first things first let's see if we can make a register functions so let's do a void register cpp functions like that it's a private function this is nothing special we haven't really done anything in here yet but this is going to register all the functions to a specific lua lua state lua state pointer l and just copy c that and put it into this cpp file now we have a function ready we don't have to put anything in this just yet but we're going to eventually just in a minute and in states what we're going to do is this push state and we're just going to say the first lua state is going to be game state lua dot lua just so we have that done so we don't forget to push a state that will initialize the states once the state is pushed we want to register functions to its lua state we need a way to get that out so i'm going to create a little accessors here place that above load file and we'll put a function section here this is just going to return a lua state pointer get lua state and we can make it inline return this l we'll call it inline this will return our lua state so we can access it outside of this state that's very important in this case because we want to do this state dot hop to get the state we just pushed get lua state like that and now we accessed it what do we want to do with it well we want to register the functions to it so this register cpp functions 
to this Lua state in here. Now we have created it, we have registered functions to it, and then, but before we do the register function, what we have to do is we have to push the engine class onto the stack for this Lua state. And this might be confusing as well, but I'll explain just in a minute. Let's do that. So Lua push light user data is a function that allows us to push C++ classes on to the Lua stack. And that is to we can access them later on. Now we want to push this to a Lua state and then add the pointer to the engine itself. So the Lua state is obviously this gets Lua state. And we're going to say this as the pointer because we want to push this engine instance of this engine class. We're going to push it onto the stack like that, but that's not enough. We need to set global. Remember, anytime you push anything onto the stack in Lua, you need to also use that data somehow. You need to set it or you, you it will just be there for no reason. So Lua set global, then get that again, get Lua state, and we're just going to call it engine. But instead of just doing engine, let's go to the header file here. And let's go up here above all of this and let's make a const expression, a const char pointer Lua engine accessor equals engine. So this is like how we're going to communicate with Lua. This is the name for our engine instance. So anytime we ask it for this global name, variable name is going to return this, whatever I pushed onto the stack. Let's go back to the CPP file and let's just paste that in there. Now we have pushed this object onto whatever object currently the engine object onto the stack and we have set it as a global variable in Lua so we can access it later. And then we registered the functions from this engine class to the Lua state and then we load the file. These steps will ensure that you properly push the state to Lua and make sure you do that in the init states right here. We don't have any register function but we can create a very simple one. Let's go to engine.h Let's go down here and say Lua functions and in the bottom here, let's create a static int Lua test, very simple Lua test Lua state pointer L and just do that. And then we'll define this in the CPP file. And this is going to be our Lua functions here. We're not going to do anything except STD C out hello from C plus plus new line. Good. And remember that engine that we pushed to the stack, we need to get it back in all of these functions. Because remember, these are static, okay, these are all static functions, that means they don't really belong to any specific class instance, they're all for the engine class itself. And we need to get the instance we pushed earlier, so we can access all the member variables and stuff that we have in here. So let's make an int here, int test like that. And in the CPP before we init the state, let's just say this test equals 400. And this is just a test member variable that we want to see we can access from Lua. Let's get that engine class and to get something we need to remember it's on the it's set as a global variable in Lua now. So we need to do Lua get global L don't do this L there is no this L it's just, there's no member variables here that you can use since this is static Lua static functions. Remember that these are static. So take this L whatever is here and then go ahead and access the engine. So Lua engine accessor. Remember that we saved the name for that global variable in Lua. Once we get it, put it onto the global, let's do something with it. So we're going to have to create an engine pointer that we then static cast to engine like that and whatever is on the stack. So Lua to user data Whatever is on top of the stack, we need to convert that to user data here, L minus one. The reason we do minus one is because we just set that up on the stack with Lua get global. It's just been pushed on the stack and whatever is on top of the stack at minus one, we're gonna get and shove into this engine pointer. And once that's done, we'll have access to that specific engine instance that we had pushed before. And now we can access its member variables and functions. So engine test. Now one more step is to register this to Lua. So we've created this function, but Lua doesn't know that it exists. Now Lua needs to know that it can call it with a specific name. And that's why we have this register CPP functions. Lua push C function. Let's push it onto the stack first, like we always do L. And then whatever the function's name is, what was it? Test Lua test like that. And then we need to do Lua set global as a function L Lua. We'll call it a CPP Lua test. So we know that it's a C++ function. These two steps ensure that this function has now been sent into Lua 
it's pushed on the stack and set as a global variable or a global name for that state with the name CPP Lua test. So I know that these names differ, but CPP Lua test on the Lua side will help us call it and know that it's a C++ function. We did the, the register CPP functions earlier here, so that should be done already. Now we can run it and it shouldn't crash. The last thing is to see if we can call this here. So let's do CPP Lua test and it's a function. So don't forget the two things there and you'll see hello from C++ 400. That is the variable member variable of game or the engine class. I know this is very confusing guys. I mean, this is, this is a roller coaster ride and a half. I will, I'm going to explain what I did quickly here uh, in case you guys didn't understand it. Otherwise, if you did understand it, you want to play around with it. I really suggest you guys go and practice and, and see, really see why we have all the steps. So let's start off by checking out again, the state.cpp. Just quickly, we didn't load the file here because we wanted to do a bunch of stuff before we load the file. If we load the file before we register function, register all the functions and stuff, we're going to call a function that doesn't exist. And then we're going to get an error. That's why we did that later. So I divided this up into two sections, one that initializes a state, creates a state, and one that loads that state file for me and runs it. And then we went into engine.cpp. We created a Another section here where we push a state, we don't directly push it to the stack. We push a state using this function. And why is because first we initialize and save the file name for that state. Then we push this engine instance onto the stack and set it as a global variable on the Lua side with a specific name so we can access it later. Then we register all the C++ functions that we want to that state, to that new state. And then we load the file after all that is done. So we have access to it in the file. The next thing we did was we registered a function. And the reason we had to get this engine instance is because we want to access member variables. You can't do that unless you, you don't have static functions, but we require static functions in Lua for this reason. So anytime, whenever we register the state, we pushed that specific instance onto the stack and set it as a global variable, we can always access that back in any function like this. And then we can access that specific engine instances member variables. Very confusing again. I know you'll understand it. We created a game loop so we don't just get one run and it's over. And in the game state, we call that CPP function that we registered. So there you go, guys. Short explanation. We're going to keep moving on with these and it's going to be going pretty fast. So hopefully you guys won't be stuck behind and I'm going to do my best to explain everything I can. Uh, otherwise, if you're having problems with the, with the Lua, just let me know and I'll see if I can make a separate tutorial for all this stuff. But for now, just keep working as much as you can and you'll see the benefits very, very soon. In the next video, we're going to be creating the window and hopefully rendering something. I've been saying that for a while, but probably <laughs> we're there very soon. So thank you guys. Take care. Keep learning. Drop a like, subscribe, check out all the links that I post, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.